So we've looked at um, parabolas and ellipses. Now we're going to look at hyperbolas. And um, the geometric definition of a hyperbola is that it's the set of all points in the plane whose distances from two fixed points, called the foci, have a constant difference. So it's the complete opposite word as when we were defining an ellipse. All right? ellipse had, for an ellipse, the distances from the two fixed points had a constant sum, and that determined the ellipse. But for hyperbola, it's different. So graphically, it's called a conic section, because if you look at this diagram on the right, if you slice a cone in, in such a way that you're pretty much parallel to that axis of rotation there, you're going to get this, this hyperbola. So some terms. Your two foci um, are indicated here, and those will always be on the same line as what's called the transverse axis. Okay, so the transverse axis connects uh, vertex to vertex, and the vertex will always be on the same line as the, fo the, the foci. Um, the axis going the other way, um, which does not intersect the curve at all, is called the conjugate axis. And you can see this rectangle that's formed there. That rectangle is important because notice that the line through the diagonals of the um, that rectangle form the asymptotes for this uh, hyperbola. Okay, and that'll always be the case. So we'll want to know the distances that give us the lengths, uh, the height, and the width of that rectangle. And fortunately, that come that is going to be present in the equation, or we can figure that out. So let's unpack this definition a little bit. Um, we always indicate the distance from the center of this hyperbola to either vertex as having a distance a. Um, so what that means is we can find that constant difference that we're talking about in the definition. That distance there we know from the origin to the first focus here is a distance of c. So already I've found um, if we just focus on this point A0, which is a point on the hyperbola, we've already found that the distance from the first focus to that vertex is A plus C. So to find that constant difference we have here, I'm going to subtract the distance between the other focus and that point A0. Because that dif that the difference there is going to be the same for every point on the hyperbola. So in particular, it'll be uh, it'll be whatever it is for this point here, this vertex. So the distance between focus 2 and that point is, well, this distance here is C, and that purple distance is A, so that small distance there must be a distance of C minus A. So let's say that D is our distance, or D is our, our difference there. That's what I mean to say then that difference is a plus c minus c minus a and that ends up being 2a which should look familiar because that's also the constant sum of an ellipse um, and this so that's that's going to be useful the second thing is that there is um, so if you imagine Imagine this distance C here from the origin to that focus. Imagine making that same distance, but uh, moving, but but making that same distance until you've intersected this vertical line x equals a. So that that's C there. Then I've got a right triangle, and this vertical distance here, which would be the the length of this uh, other leg of this right triangle. We're defining that to have a distance of to be a distance called b. So in general, we know. I want to just star this. We also know that we're defining b squared to be to be that distance there. All right, and that turns out that that b value, if you look up here, all, will also be will also be these, uh, will help us find the coordinates of these points on the conjugate axis. All right, and therefore, we'll be able to make that rectangle
we'll be able to make that rectangle and sketch a good hyperbola. Okay, so keep this identity in mind as we move forward. So we're not going to actually derive the equation of hyperbola, we're just going to get started, and then I'll, I'll tell you the result, and you can try it on your own if you want to. Remember that the hyperbola is defined to be the set of all points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points in the plane have a constant difference. So let's let P be a point on the hyperbola. So we're going to say that that constant difference, which would be PF1 minus PF2, that constant, constant difference we found on the previous slide to be 2a. Now using the difference form, the, the distance formula, P, uh, the distance PF1 is just going to be the square root of the difference in the x-coordinate squared, so x minus negative c, which is x plus c squared, plus the, dis the difference in the y-coordinate squared, which is just y squared, minus the distance PF2, which would be the, distance, the difference between the x-coordinates, x minus c squared, plus y squared, and we need that to equal 2a. So there's your setup. And so again, now we've taken a geometric description, since we're in the xy plane, now we've got algebra to do. You'd have to, you're going to have to do two sets of squaring, and you're going to have to use the identity that a, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared because you're going to replace that c squared with, uh, in terms of b squared and a squared. Having done all that, you will end up with this. It'll, you know, once the, the dust settles, you end up with this. Now, a couple of comments I want to make about this particular equation for our hyperbola. The first is that this particular hyperbola has no y-intercept. And I know that because if I plug 0 in for x, that term goes away. But I have negative y squared over b squared equals 1. And solving for y squared will be, be, be taking the square root of a negative. So that means that you're, anytime you have the x squared term first, um, you are dealing with a hyperbola that's situated like the one I have here. Okay, because again, that has no that hyperbola has no y-intercept. On the other hand, if you have a hyperbola that has this equation, again, notice that we always define the a squared term to be under the first the the first term of this expression here on the left. That would have no x-intercept, because if y is 0, then um, x, there, there is no solution for, for that equation that results. All right, so that orientation would go with that type of, that uh, standard form of our hyperbola. So the one on the left is the standard form, the one on the right is its inverse relation. which is a result of switching x and y. Okay. Um, the other thing is that these hyperbolas have uh, asymptotes. So to give you a sense of what the asymptotes are in terms of a and b, so they're diagonal asymptotes, they go through the origin. Okay, and we'll, we'll see how you can always find them. They're their equations. But let me give you a, a more analytic way of thinking about it. So let's just deal with this one here. If you want to find the, what the asymptotes are, just let's solve this equation for y squared. So if you do that, you get y squared over b squared is equal to um, is equal to x squared over a squared minus one. And then if we multiply through by b squared, shrink this up a little bit. If you multiply through by b squared, you get that y squared equals uh, b squared x squared over a squared minus b squared and square rooting you get that 
y is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared x squared over a squared minus b squared. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that um, as x goes to infinity, right, what's the curve going towards? Well, as x goes to infinity, then um, really this expression here, this square root, I mean, ultimately in the long run, that minus b squared, since that b is some fixed term, as a gets very, very, I'm, I'm sorry, as x gets very, very large, that minusing that b squared has very little effect on the number. So as x goes to uh, infinity, then y goes to plus or minus the square root of b squared x squared over a squared, which is really just plus or minus b over a x. And so those are the equation of my as those are the equations of my asymptotes. And again, I'll summarize this on the next the next page here. But so our asymptotes. Would have equation y equals plus or minus b over a x. And um, I'm not going to do the same reasoning, but if you do the same reasoning on this form of the hyperbola, but just think about y going to infinity, you'll see that the asymptotes have, have those for equations. Okay. And um, on the next slide, you'll see the relationship between A and B and these asymptotes. And um, it's kind of a nice summary of our, our hyperbolas in general. So again, just to summarize what we just derived, this would be basically a summary of any hyperbola centered at the origin that has this for an equation. And the one on the right would have this general form. And so you can see we can find everything. If we know A and B, we can find everything. And that C actually is not part of the hyperbola, but if we know C, we can find A and B because of this important Pythagorean identity that I brought up, I brought up a couple times already. That identity turns out to be important if you're given information about the f uh, either focus or the foci, and you want to recover information about A and B. That relationship will be what you'll want to use. Um, notice the rectangle, the, the width of, and length of these rectangles are 2b and 2a, respectively, um, and that the diagonals, uh, or the lines that go through the diagonals, are those asymptotes. So that'll help, that'll help us make a nice sketch when, when it comes time to do that.